thank you to this year's Salute to Travel and Tourism Gold Level sponsors, Bass Pro Shops, Madden Media, University Plaza Hotel, Commerce Bank, Springfield Branson National Airport, 37 North Expeditions. To everyone in our great outdoor family, you may be feeling a little cooped up, but don't forget, there are still rocks to be skipped, trails to be trampled, fish to be caught. The great outdoors are wide open and they're calling us like never before. In these trying times, we need nature more than ever. We need nature to remind us that like a sunrise or the turning of the tides, these challenges will pass. We need nature to help us heal and reconnect with the ones we love the most. So when you can, get back to nature. Get back to each other. We're here for you. We love flying out of the Springfield Airport. I mean, parking is easy. Short lines, check-ins are easy. Plus, a great selection of food. Don't say it. Easy. Springfield Airport, we make flying easy. Thank you to this year's Salute to Travel and Tourism Silver Level sponsors. Double Tree by Hilton, AAA Travel. Springfield's University Plaza has everything you need, but more importantly, everything you want for your next meeting. Mix in that classic Midwest hospitality and the event will be an unforgettable experience. You're a barista. Based on the concentration. A teacher. Ooh. A storyteller. Connecting all those dots can be a challenge. We've got the tools and talent to help. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Hi, I'm Amy Austin, Chair of the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau Board of Directors. Welcome to the 2021 Salute to Travel and Tourism, and thank you for joining us for our annual update on the status of the local tourism industry and presentation of the 2021 Pinnacle Award. As you know, the past year has been difficult for all of us. Not only are we worried about keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe and healthy, we're watching people struggle financially because of the economic downturn that has come with the pandemic. Hardest hit has been the leisure and hospitality industry, an industry that plays a vital role in the region's economy and one to which the CVB is dedicated to helping grow and remain strong. Despite the economic downturn, we're seeing local business owners and community leaders working together to overcome those challenges and make Springfield an even better place to live and visit in the future. 
With a look toward the past and the future, the program today will include community champions who have a stake in the strength of the local tourism industry and its impact on our economy. You'll also hear from Tracy Kimberlin, President and CEO of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Megan Buckbinder, Director of Marketing for the CVB. After that, we'll move on to our awards presentation honoring an organization that has played a significant role in helping the local and state tourism industry over the years, the Missouri Division of Tourism. We'll begin with Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe, Chair of the Missouri Tourism Commission, the government agency that oversees the Missouri Division of Tourism. The Lieutenant Governor is a tourism advocate not only for Springfield, but for the entire state, and we appreciate him joining us today. Hello, I'm Missouri Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe. Welcome to the virtual salute to travel and tourism here in the Springfield Convention and Visitor Bureau market area. You know, it's exciting to be able to be a small part of this and, and kick this uh, event off. I know our world has been a little bit different in the last year, but trust me, uh, we're gonna come through it and we're gonna come out bigger and better than ever. You know, I've been to the actual event before and I can tell you that uh, I know you always have uh, planning in place and community partners and collaboration be between your various entities both public and private in your market area that make tourism what we know Missouri to be about tourism. It's just a fantastic industry uh, that we're just so proud to be in. As part of your tourism commission, uh, I want to tell you how important Springfield and your marketplace area. As you know, your convention and visitors bureau covers about a three county area. And just this last year, even though we had an impact from COVID, this is how important that three county area is. About $830 million in tourism related spending and over 20,000 employees in that three county area directly in the tourism business. Now, that's incredibly important to not only our state, but to your market as well. And I just wanna tell you, thank you for your efforts. Uh, you guys have some unbelievable attractions, some unbelievable people working on promoting the area all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Believe me, I get calls from your area all the time. You come see us at the office. We'll be down to see you soon, I'm sure. Uh, but I just wanted to take this moment to say uh, I appreciate you going forward with plans and trying to get people together to understand how important the tourism industry is for your region and for our state. Uh, we know that you make a significant impact on this area, and it's because of planning. It's because of leadership. It's because people get together and they care about that area. And you can tell that when I look at the numbers that we just heard, uh, how significant that planning and participation is. Uh, I also can't wait to see who wins the Pinnacle Award this year. I know it's a big secret, and I'm hoping some organization, maybe a statewide one, ends up landing that in their lap, and I'm sure You'll hear more about that later. Listen, have a great meeting. Uh, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in person, in your businesses, uh, in, your, in your lives as we go through the COVID economy. And as I said earlier, uh, we are, have a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a freight train. Uh, we're gonna get through this, and people are gonna be really ready to get out and see places all across the Midwest. We believe they're gonna to wanna to see places right here in Missouri, and you'll be ready to take those visitors in, welcome them, keep them safe, and have a great 2021. Thanks for having me on, and God bless each and every one of you. To everyone in our great outdoor family, you may be feeling a little cooped up, but don't forget, there are still rocks to be skipped, trails to be trampled, fish to be caught. The great outdoors are wide open and they're calling us like never before. In these trying times, we need nature more than ever. We need nature to remind us that like a sunrise or the turning of the tides, these challenges will pass. We need nature to help us heal and reconnect with the ones we love the most. So when you can, Get back to nature. Get back to each other. We're here for you.
Springfield's University Plaza has everything you need, but more importantly, everything you want for your next meeting. Mix in that classic Midwest hospitality and the event will be an unforgettable experience. You know, I think for us, I've forgotten how much I love Springfield and all the reasons why. I think when you go through a day to day, you forget about all the great stories. And throughout the pandemic, the CVB has told an amazing story of Springfield. Uh, it's helped remind me and my wife and my family of all the fun things that we can go do. We don't need to leave this place because Springfield has more opportunities than most of us even remember. And I think that's what I really appreciated is to remember how great we have it in this area. What we've done a lot is just gone outside and gone hiking and, and that sort of stuff. Every year we get to fall or the end of fall and it starts getting cold and we say, shoot, we live in this beautiful part of the country and we haven't taken advantage of it. And this year we really have taken advantage of it and it was really eye-opening for just how much there is, both in terms of like locally, local parks and stuff, and then regionally as well. Like the Ozarks is a, one of our major attractions in tourism is our natural resources that we have in Southwest Missouri. And Springfield, you know, our nickname is Queen City of the Ozarks, and it is. Uh, we, I think another key partner should be working closely with Branson and all the natural resources, our lakes and rivers in the Ozarks just south of, of Springfield. It's one big happy family, and it draws people here. And it's not like we see this every day. I can't underscore this enough. People come here to visit. They don't just come to Springfield and leave. They don't just come to Branson and leave. If they come down by our lakes, they make a side trip to come to Springfield. Or conversely, if they come to Springfield, it's like an extra huge drawing card. You know, we have people coming to Springfield to experience the outdoors, to experience the business community we have, but people are also coming to Springfield for the arts. Uh, a third of our audiences, we know from our research, are tourists that are coming to Springfield to experience that. And they're also here to spend money. They're here to shop. They're here to go to our restaurants and even stay overnight in our hotels. When you align that with and you multiply that by all the other natural resources in the Ozarks, uh, that's my main thing I just wanted to convey is thanks to, to Tracy and everyone at CBB. We gotta be looking at the whole big picture, which is the Ozarks region. The impact of tourism on Springfield small businesses is really a phenomenal one. We definitely can sense and we can tell in terms of who comes into the door when our tourists are coming to town. We look forward particularly to some of the large events that take place in our city and that's very, very important to the bottom line. You know, I think the Springfield Cardinals, we're excited to play many roles. Uh, first of all, I think regional tourism. You know, people come from all around the region to cheer for the Cardinals. Uh, I think it's so much fun for everyone. Um, but second, it's a little quieter, and I think it's that we can help conventions being booked here. Uh, we deal with groups every year that decide to come to Springfield based on the Springfield Cardinals schedule. So I think it feels really great that we can help out the hotel industry and the entire economy by knowing people make it a point to book conventions in Springfield. And finally, I think we're a, a point of civic pride and, and it's really easy to track how many people come to the games and the number of tickets you sell. But we have over 150,000 social media followers that we're consistently engaging in and consistently telling the story about Springfield. So for those reasons, we just love the fact that we can impact the travel and tourism industry in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, we are a TV show that broadcasts to 17 markets. And over the last several years, we have people that drive in and travel in for it. What we hope to create is this place, this experience where you come to an event, and then when you come to the event, you get to experience the best that Springfield has to offer right in this area. And uh, so we hope we contribute to it in that way. And then we're a huge recipient of this, the, the general growth and the general growth in terms of tourism as well, because um, we get people coming to us in a way that's not just the promotion we're creating, but there's just a general like, you gotta go to Springfield, there's things going on, there are things to see, and we're a huge beneficiary of that. I think there are a lot of things that can be done to help bring things back. I'm probably one of those people that thinks about the new normal, so when we talk about bringing things back, it may not be back in the way we thought about it. We certainly recognize the uh, benefits of what we call a staycation, just people discovering people are not flying as much, obviously, so people can discover in a very safe fashion things within their own community. So we've been promoting um, bring some C Street home with you, so we've been kind of um, really pushing the idea of people coming to Commercial Street and whether it's actually staying and visiting or taking a curbside or takeout or pickup, 
Um, taking those things that make our district very unique, whether it's artisan gifts, whether it's boutique shopping, whether it's going to our restaurants and bars, taking pieces of that home and enjoying it. You know, Springfield compared to a lot of the other communities where we do business and have hotels and restaurants and other facilities is very resilient. Um, you know, I think people have continued to try to do business and have events in a safe manner or maybe a little more uh, willing to um, look at things reasonably and factually and scientifically and just make good decisions on that. So I'd say the resilience has been really the biggest thing and, and really just the, kind of the positive nature of the community. Uh, and now, you know, with the vaccination being rolled out, we're here hopefully at the end of it and things are going to get a lot better. So uh, I think we're in for a lot of fun here in the future. <laughs> I was going to say that was funny. Um, <laughs> Probably the biggest thing I've noticed about Springfield in the last year is the inside of my house. Well, this last year, in terms of Springfield and its relationship to the travel industry, I don't want, I don't want to be that one that sounds pessimistic, but um, we're a resilient community, but we know that the pandemic has had a really devastating impact on our small businesses. Many of the major events that we look forward to, I can think of a number of specific ones in my mind. Those events were canceled, they didn't take place. Um, I work very closely with the Commercial Street Merchants Association. So we're in the habit of knowing, you know, the basketball tournaments coming to town. We're knowing particular conventions are coming and we think about how do we market our district? How do we work in cooperation with the Visitors Bureau to make sure people know this is a place to visit? And of course, those things did not take place. Live events are something that went away early and haven't come back yet. A lot of people like, their March and April were drastically different, but now they've kind of come back to some sort of normalcy. Folks doing live events, we're still kind of in March and April. <laughs> Rather than just throwing our hands up in the air and saying, I give up until this is over, uh, each group along the way has figured out how to, to do it, how to approach it, how to tackle it head on. And the arts especially have always been really good at trying something new. It's kind of what we do, we get creative. And so to experiment with streaming, with um, distancing, how do we organize our houses so that audiences feel safe still coming into the theater um, and still being able to experience it? How do our actors on stage, or our performers on stage feel comfortable performing in, in person? Uh, and so our, our artists and our arts community and our organizations have been really working hard, but our patrons have done the same thing. Our visitors are still doing the same thing. How do they feel safe and how, if they don't feel safe coming in person, how uh, can they still support by continuing a donation for an event that may have been canceled? They'll roll it over into a, just a, a cash gift. And those have been so crucial to make sure none of our organizations disappear in the pandemic. There are a lot of communities elsewhere that have not been so lucky uh, that we have been able to make it this far. And so like what I would really encourage people to do is like go to things when you have the opportunity, when we're, when we're back to normal-ish again in terms of events and stuff, to really go and support and make a point of it. Well, I guess I don't really have to mention this thing called COVID that happened, uh, but uh, obviously that's made things incredibly challenging for our industry. And uh, it's been amazing, I think, the effort that's been involved in trying to grapple with it, understand it, and then try to do business in the atmosphere, uh, you know, that and, and really just try to survive. We've learned through the pandemic new safety measures that I think will be ongoing that will make audiences feel safe and make people feel safe to come here, that the due diligence is happening. Um, and some of those things are just gonna become normal and every day. Um, and so making sure our patrons um, are coming to see something they really want and are excited about, but also making sure that they feel really comfortable about what it means to visit Springfield. Yeah, I think the biggest part we have to recover is trust. And I think that we need to make sure that people that come to our community, they trust us. When they see things that are safe and they're purposeful, I think if you can build the trust, then word of mouth is gonna be so important. Um, we're all on edge. You know, operators, we're on edge. Families, we're on edge. Communities, we're on edge. What we need is trust. And I think if Springfield can lead the way in building trust with others, I think we're gonna rebound quicker than everybody. Um, that's going to be a huge piece of that recovery is once again feeling comfortable in a theater or at a music venue or an art gallery or at a museum or whatever the case may be. That safety factor is something that we're going to have to really invest some time and thought into as we're marketing and rebuilding seasons and those kinds of things. You know, for us, 
both as you know private ho hospitality industry and as the city and CBB should come together and really make um, create a number of events that once people get to feeling a little safer and and get out into the community that we can really celebrate because uh, I'm a firm believer that the golden age of travel and tourism is coming. I think this event has kind of suppressed people to a point and you know everywhere in the country where we have salespeople they're out talking to clients and they're out talking to people and everybody wants to get back out everybody wants to uh, you know join arms arm in arm and and uh, get back to being human beings you know and get back to meeting and having face-to-face -face interaction and doing the things that make life worth living in a lot of ways. You know, just cautiously optimistic about live events again um, and what that could, what that could be. I, I know, <laughs> the only thing I think about is when I used to do Skinny Improv, we do it every week, and when it was like a rainy, cold week or like ice storms or snow, people were in for a week, they would come out like on Friday night for a show and they're just like ready to go. And so I hope we see, see that. Uh, I don't know what that means people will be like after a year or more, <laughs> but like hopefully that means hopefully that means big excited crowds and just get people together and celebrate. Um, I think that's what we're all after, and we're kind of prone to that in the hospitality industry. We like to celebrate anyway, so uh, we are on board completely with trying to help with that program over the next six to twelve months. We're very proud of our hometown, Springfield. We want to do all we can to share it with others from around the country. People come here. They love Springfield, so we just got to keep getting more and more people here. It's awesome. We know that we missed out on an entire year, but we are so excited to welcome everyone back. And when we do, I think we're excited to see the renewed enthusiasm. And sometimes you have to miss something before you really know how much we appreciate it. And I can tell you that all of us on staff, we appreciate all of you. And you know, we hear all the time about the benefit of actually shopping local, but I'm really struck by the fact that for so many merchants in our district, when you go into our local businesses, our local stores, what you see is what you have. In other words, those are the individuals who own that business, who own that Airbnb, who own that particular restaurant or bar. And so there's no corporate office to say, hey, sales are down. Hey, we've experienced this in the last month. That person and their staff or employee base are directly experiencing you know, the consequences of the pandemic, the consequences of the reduction in sales, et cetera. And so I can't emphasize enough how important it is when our Springfield community really tries to you know, find creative ways to support our local businesses and see them engage. We still have a long way to go to, to the actual recovery whenever that happens. And so we're still gonna depend on our friends and our patrons and others to be able to get to that point. Um, but it's been really heartwarming and encouraging um, to see that those patrons still care, even if we can't have you in our house, as you might say, they still care enough to find ways to support the work and make sure that it's still here in a year. But yeah, I think we just all, we're in it together and we need to fight our way out of this together. One other thing about tourism, it's a wonderful investment, I believe, not only for our company, but for our state and our community because people come here or any other destinations they go to around the country, tourists spend a lot of money. They generate sales for local businesses, from hotels, motels, restaurants, filling stations, uh, malls, everywhere. But they don't create so much burden on the infrastructure like for schools, for hospitals, uh, all these things. So they can, their tourism dollars are very beneficial dollars coming into any community. The arts in general in Springfield during a normal year have a major economic impact. It's about $26.9 million the last time we were able to do our study. Um, that's a major impact and as we're talking about our, our economy and recovering, we can't forget about the creative sector. Um, often it kind of is sort of secondary. We've got to worry about all of these other things and then you know that other stuff is nice too. But to have a holistic, full economy that's truly robust and it's able to survive things like a pandemic, things are going to continue. Stuff is going to come up. And so the more that we can do as a community to make sure that our economy, 
is whole and diverse in offerings, um, the better off that we'll be down the road. And so making sure that the arts are an important part of the recovery, just like all of the ind industries, and taken as seriously as others. And so as we're figuring out how to invest in our recovery, the arts should be a, a really important part of that. We love our partnership with the Convention and Visitors Bureau because we know to all of the tourists that are coming to Springfield and to the Springfield area that that partnership is really promoting and putting our business out there in the public eye. We love our tourists, we love hearing their stories, and so many of them particularly like coming to the historic district of Commercial Street. And so we know that the Convention and Visitors Bureau is really making sure that all of the many facets of Springfield are in front of the tourists. A large part of what we're doing is the same mission as the CVB, and we've been uh, hugely impacted by the CVB in the last few years really coming alongside us and saying we want to be a part of what you're doing and uh, it helps both in terms of just like sponsorship but then also in terms of like we've had folks uh, Susan Wade has helped us get the word out to travel writers and that sort of thing it's been a huge like a really big impactful thing for us and then also just the work that the CVB does overall and we're a small piece of that it's really pretty re reciprocal in that way that um, we hope that we are able to give some value to, to what you all are doing, and we hope that uh, we know we receive some value, a lot of value in turn. It's absolutely critical. Uh, the CVB is, you know, the body that, that really goes out and sells Springfield and sells and recruits uh, events to come here. So without the CVB, we are not successful in the hospitality industry. Um, you know, they're an incredible organization. Uh, they have ties everywhere in the United States with associations and, you know, corporate groups of all types um, and, and all types of, you know, leisure, business, association, travel. And uh, so the more they bring to this city, the more successful we are. So I'd say without the CVB, uh, the hotel and, and uh, hospitality industry can't survive. The Springfield Regional Arts Council has been a partner with the CBB for years and years and years. And it's been a, a, such a wonderful, long-running relationship that we understand tourism and, and the CBB really understands the role that the arts play in the bigger picture. Uh, and so we're able to work together to make sure our, our visitors are informed of what's available, of what's coming up as they're planning conferences and other things to come here and set up shop, that we have all of these other assets that they can experience and perhaps their patrons can experience. You know, I think for us, it's really important to realize the rising tide. And I think the CVB acts for the rising tide for everyone. Uh, for us, it's really easy to talk about baseball and fireworks and giveaways. Uh, but I think we also need to trust the CVB to tell the entire story about Springfield. It's not just about sports. As much as I'd like to think it is, it's also about the arts and it's about small businesses and it's about some of the fun opportunities that you have. And so for that, we put some trust in the CVB to make sure the rising tide for the entire community. It takes teamwork. When you get people working together, you can really make great strides. And I look at tourism here in Springfield and in our state. Uh, I think it's been very positive to have our local uh, convention and Visitors Bureau investing alongside our state investing and businesses like Bass Pro Shops and others in our community that are true uh, tourist destinations and it has an amplifier multiplier effect uh, when you really cooperate with each other so I think it's been a wonderful thing um, and I hope it continues for a long time into the future. It's a wrap. <laughs> Something like that. That is exactly what I was
You're a barista. Based on the concentration. A teacher. A storyteller. Connecting all those dots can be a challenge. We've got the tools and talent to help. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Hi, my name is Tracy Kimball, and I'm President and CEO of the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I don't need to tell anyone in the audience that 2020 was a year to forget, particularly when it comes to the travel industry. April of 2020 was the worst month on record for the travel industry uh, in Springfield, the United States, and the world as a whole. In Springfield, our hotel occupancy dropped to a dismal 23% when we would normally run about 75% in that month. Group travel totally disappeared. We spent a great deal of time processing cancellations for conventions and sporting events. Business and leisure travel dried up to a trickle and unemployment in the travel industry rose to over 50%, twice that of the Great Depression. The CVB's revenue uh, in the month of May uh, went from $326,000 in May of 2019 to 38,000 in May of 2020. Fortunately, the Convention of Visitors Bureau reacted very quickly. As soon as the NBA canceled their season, we immediately cut all of our advertising for the rest of 2020. $750,000 in advertising was cut, and then we cut another $150,000 in other expenses. We froze our payroll, uh, we eliminated incentives, we closed our information centers, and so therefore had to lay off our part-time employees, and we didn't fill an open position uh, that we had at the time. We immediately began developing programs that we could use when the recovery started. Uh, one of those was a group promotion uh, that offered uh, with our hotel partners no attrition in hotel contracts and also substantial rebates for meetings and conventions that uh, would book in Springfield before the end of 2022. We also did a fall promotion uh, for leisure travel called Give Yourself a Weekend. Uh, where we encourage those who were traveling to do so safely. And then we're in, a, in the process of developing a major leisure promotion, which we will kick off as soon as the pandemic subsides. Megan will fill you in on the details of those promotions. Because the Convention of Visitors Bureau is funded primarily by a hotel tax, we immediately had to replace that funding. We were fortunate in that we were able to sell property that we owned on Chestnut Expressway and Highway 65. We were also awarded additional cooperative marketing funds through the Missouri Division of Tourism, and we were awarded three Show Me Strong CARES Act grants totaling $1.7 million. We are now also eligible to apply for payroll protection plan for giveable loans, uh, which we were not uh, eligible to apply for in 2020, but will be able to apply for those in 2021. Applying for and administering grants is new to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. We had never had to do that before, and I can assure you that it takes a heck of a lot of work uh, and effort and time uh, to administer and apply for those grants. But fortunately, uh, getting those grants put us in a very solid financial uh, position, and we are going to be able to continue with very extensive marketing programs in 2021 and 2022. Things are much better now than they were in April of 2020. Our hotel occupancies have improved significantly. We actually ran above 50% occupancy for four months in a row during the summer. Our hotel revenues are going to be a little slower to recover because the drop in average daily rate or the average amount that hotels charge their customers dropped as well when the pandemic started. But we're certainly doing much better than most cities. Uh, we're doing much better than the state as a whole, and we're doing much better than the nationwide average as far as hotel occupancies are concerned. And ironically, in January of 2021, we will actually see more rooms occupied than any other January in history other than the ice storm of 2007. We still have a very big hill to climb, however, and here's Megan to tell you how we're going to climb it. Hello. I'm Megan Buckbinder, and in July of 2020, I took on the role of Director of Marketing for the CVB. As you all know, it is our responsibility to not only educate potential visitors on the incredible place we get to call home, but to persuade them that Springfield is a must-visit destination for their next trip, 
whether that be for leisure, business, sports, or group travel. We had some pretty impressive marketing plans for 2020, which had to change on a dime once COVID hit. Suddenly our advertising plans that were slated to be the largest campaign we've ever done were canceled. And we turned our focus to the responsibility we had to our community and partners during this time. We became an industry resource for updating our partners on the status of the virus, shutdowns, and economic assistance. We used our platforms to amplify the messages of our local businesses and their plans during this uncertainty of the moment. We hosted the virtual spring travel auction in early May that consisted of items donated by the Springfield's tourism industry. We raised funds for the Mother's Industry Support Fund, a partnership between Mother's Brewing Company and the Community Foundation of the Ozarks, designed to help unemployed hospitality workers in Springfield. As Tracy mentioned, we received grant funds through the State CARES Act that allowed us to advertise during the fall months. The messaging had to focus on safe travel and show the safety precautions Springfield has in place to keep residents and visitors safe. While this wasn't the ideal time for a massive advertising campaign, we do believe the work we were able to do not only laid the groundwork for our campaigns in 2021, but it also allowed us to invest back in our local community. We worked with local creative businesses, Revel Advertising, Lock and & Stash, and Starboard and & Port to create the campaign, Give Yourself a Weekend, showcasing all the ways that you can enjoy the many things to do in Springfield during this time. The creative focused on the many outdoor activities in the area, and also the way you can still visit restaurants and attractions in Springfield while remaining safe and socially distant. We forged new partnerships with local businesses and tried out new marketing strategies that we'll be able to build upon in 2021 and beyond. As a part of our grant funding, we worked with another locally based company, H2R, on COVID confidence research that gave us more insights on what people who are most likely to visit Springfield are looking for in travel destinations. Some of the key takeaways indicated that travelers are looking for destinations within driving distance that offered unique experiences they can't get at home, have access to outdoor activities, and are the perfect family getaway. I'd like to say that Springfield checks all of those boxes and we will be perfectly positioned to attract more visitors this year. We will also be launching a new research dashboard on our website in the coming weeks, so all of our partners will be able to access it to aid them in their own marketing efforts. Our 2021 marketing plans are designed to build upon the headway we made this fall, entice and incentivize travelers to choose Springfield and jumpstart the travel economy for our community. We'll be deploying a close to $2 million marketing campaign targeting drivable markets where there is a high probability of potential visitors. Our message is simple. There is only one Springfield. In a country with over 30 Springfields, there is only one Springfield, Missouri. Our city nestled in the beautiful Ozarks, home to locals filled with a community pride, ready and waiting to welcome new visitors and show them around to all of their favorite local spots where they can find the best burger, in their opinion, or favorite trailhead and picnic spot, the best weekend activities for families, and the you cannot leave without trying this type of experience. Our city was built by the love of our local community, so who better to tell someone why they should visit Springfield than a local? We'll be able to thread this campaign throughout not just our paid advertising, but our organic content we develop through our blog, newsletter, guides, social media channels, and more we'll be highlighting the best of Springfield through the eyes of our community itself. To incentivize these travelers to come to Springfield now as opposed to later, we're developing a digital package in partnership with our hotels, attractions, and restaurants where the CVB will pay for one of their nights in a participating hotel if they attend a certain number of attractions and restaurants while they're here. This will get visitors staying longer in our hotels, dining in our restaurants, and experiencing our attractions. We are currently in development of this program, so stay tuned for more information. Also new in 2021 is our newly redesigned website. Just launched this month, the new springfieldmo.org offers a more content-driven site that lends itself to telling the stories of Springfield through a more user-friendly navigation and an emphasis on editorial content and video. With an average of 1 million visitors to our site each year and the most comprehensive event calendar in the area, we expect the upgrades to this site to show an increase in engagement with those visitors. In addition to our new website, our annual visitor's guide made some changes this year as well. 
now called the official Springfield Guide, we've included more interactive ways for readers to engage with not only the content in the guide, but bring that to life through video and digital content made available through QR codes placed throughout the guide, directing people to different pages on our website with more information. Our seasonal event guide will undergo some changes as well. We've decided not to print a physical guide going forward and instead develop marketing plans that specifically highlight our event calendar on our site, not only to visitors, but also to locals. Our popular tap and pour program is going strong with over 1400 registrants throughout the life of the digital program. We took the tour completely virtual this year and will continue that plan as a means for the program redemptions. However, plans are in the works to develop a ride along print passport that people can pick up in businesses, restaurants, and breweries themselves to learn more about the program and each participant while pointing people to the digital tour where they can redeem their offers. It's been a challenging year marketing the travel and tourism industry, but because of the resilience of all of you, the support of the Division of Tourism and our local leaders, and the hard unyielding work of our staff, we are excited and hopeful for what this year can bring for our industry. We're looking forward to working with you and for you this year. Thanks. We love flying out of the Springfield Airport. I mean, parking is easy. Short lines, check-ins are easy. Plus, a great selection of food. Don't say it. Easy. Springfield Airport, we make flying easy. Because of all the curveballs the pandemic threw us this year, we're only giving away one award, and that's our Pinnacle Award. Uh, one of the first calls that I got after the pandemic started was from Stephen Fouts, the director of the Missouri Division of Tourism, asking how he could help the industry. And, you know, bringing travel and tourism into the state of Missouri is a group effort, and we certainly can't get people in Springfield unless we first get them in the state. And the state has for years done a great job and spent millions of dollars promoting our state as a great place to visit. Through their efforts, we're able to capitalize on that and then get them here in Springfield. But when the pandemic started, we saw another side of the Division of Tourism. We saw true compassion and a love for the industry and a true desire to help out those in the industry that had been devastated by this pandemic. It uh, goes without saying that Stephen and his staff and the Tourism Commission did a great deal of work uh, working with the governor's office in setting aside CARES Act funding for destination marketing organizations like the Convention of Visitors Bureau. And I know without Stephen and his staff's help, that would not have happened. Because of that, it put us in a position that we're in now where we can come out of this pandemic with a very healthy marketing budget, for the most part, thanks to the Division of Tourism. And it's for that reason and for the great teamwork that they do and for the cooperation of the entire staff of the Division of Tourism, we would like to give the Division of Tourism the Pinnacle Award this year. Thanks to you, Tracy, to the staff at the Springfield CVB, and everyone who was part of the selection process for the Pinnacle Award. On behalf of the entire team at the Missouri Division of Tourism, I'm honored and humbled to accept on their behalf. Certainly, there are many people who should be with me here today, and I'd like to recognize a few of them. First off, Governor Mike Parson and his administration for being strong advocates for the tourism industry and for creating the Show Me Strong DMO funding program. It's through Governor Parsons' support that we were able to successfully administer that program, which helped DMOs stay in front of consumers during a difficult time for the travel industry. Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe and members of the Missouri Tourism Commission also deserve to be lauded for their efforts in promoting tourism in Missouri and for supporting our division. Lieutenant Governor Kehoe was especially instrumental in creating a tourism task force that helped identify needs of the industry in the pandemic's early stages. Likewise, those who served on the task force gave a lot of their time and energy to the cause. They played a key role in the creation of the Show Me Strong Pledge 
and they're to be commended for their efforts on behalf of the entire statewide industry. Treasurer Ryan Fitzpatrick, the working group he led to oversee and administer CARES funding, and staff from the Office of Budget and Planning also played a key role in the program. Without their guidance, providing support for DMOs across Missouri would have been very difficult. And within the Department of Economic Development, there are many outstanding indiv individuals who deserve thanks for their leadership. These include Director Rob Dixon, Deputy Director Luke Holtschneider, Financial System Director Stacy Hurst, and our General Counsel Rochelle Reeves. Legislative Liaison Philip Arnzen also needs to be recognized for his work in helping create the framework for the Show Me Strong DMO funding program. As the pandemic took hold, it's fair to say members of our team within the Division of Tourism spent more time on the phone with these individuals than we did talking with our own families, and I cannot thank them enough for being there for us. In working with our DMO partners around the state, we very quickly realized how the pandemic was impacting communities and individuals whose livelihoods are reliant on the tourism industry. Our assistance included providing status updates on the healthcare situation and on the state of the industry, research on traveler sentiment, modifications to our website to highlight virtual experiences and opportunities in local communities, and making changes to our cooperative marketing program in an effort to ease the financial burdens on DMOs that were struggling due to the loss of revenues. The Missouri Film Office, which is part of the Division of Tourism, also launched a series of monthly meetups in partnership with the Missouri Motion Media Association to help ensure members of that industry stay connected during what are equally challenging times. Looking back over the last year, I can say that each and every member of the Division of Tourism team made significant contributions to the travel industry. In light of this award in particular, I'd be remiss not to acknowledge our Cooperative Program Manager, Megan Rogers, for administering the Show Me Strong program. Alex Wilkshire, Lynn Strumpf, Debbie Steffen, Kara Kleindienst, and Ashley Sneed also deserve a nod for assisting in the program's management. As you all know, 2020 was an extremely difficult year in the tourism industry. And as someone who considers our partners to be family, it was tough to see and hear details about those struggles. Tens of thousands of jobs have been lost, businesses are closed, and the impact on the economy is staggering. But as Lieutenant Governor Kehoe noted, we will bounce back. Missouri is a diverse, culturally rich state with much to offer both residents and visitors. The Division of Tourism, working with our advertising agency of record, OBP, is excited to move forward with what we believe is an innovative travel marketing campaign that will drive interest in and travel to Missouri in 2021 and beyond. And as we commemorate the state's bicentennial in 2021, it's the perfect time to innovate, inspire, and celebrate everything Missouri has to offer. Again, thank you very much for this wonderful award. It's an honor to be part of this event and we cannot wait to see each of you in person. Until then, stay well and travel safely. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Your support for the local travel and tourism industry is appreciated. And as the CVB and industry work toward recovering from the challenges we've identified today, it's reassuring to know you're here with us along the way.